Hi, so in video 1214, what we did was take this thing, which is the motor from a hoverboard, and turn it into a wind generator by strapping some blades on it. Then we stuck it in the wind and we saw what we got. Now, the maximum you're going to get from something like that is round about 2 to 3 watts, because that's the wind speed, that's the blade length. That blade length and wind speed are what generate the turning force, the ability to grab the power out of the wind and turn it into a turning force. That then turns a generator, and obviously that's what then generates. Now, I did it that way around because in an earlier video, we took this thing. This is a straightforward DC motor from a car fan, and we strapped on those blades to that and took some readings of that. And what I was interested in illustrating was not the maximum output of this, but the output of this was very similar to the output of this. This is actually a little stronger, and it would be a little stronger, because what governs generation are three factors. Number of turns, strength of magnetic field, and speed at which it turns. Now, of course, this has got neodymium magnets here, so the magnetic field is very much stronger, and so we'd expect it to be a little bit better. But what I think is that speed of turning is the really important issue. Now, the losses that we're going to suffer from poor blade design and poor design of the rectifier, and this is a silicon three-phase rectifier made from one N4007s, are, to my mind, insignificant in terms of the effect that speed has on this thing, and that's what I'm really interested in showing. Now, if you remember, we took a five-pound hand blender with a DC motor, a commutator DC motor, and we got something crazy like 240 volts out of the thing, and we got about 30 watts in total. And that was all to do with the speed. Now, I want to illustrate exactly the same thing for you. So I'm going to put this into a little gearing system so we can see the effect that speed will have on this. Now, I've rigged it up in a simple little jig here where we've got a large bicycle wheel rubbing against it, so we've effectively got a gear. Every one turn of this, we're going to get about six or seven turns of that. Now, we pay for speed by torque. So it's going to be harder to turn this, but this is going to turn quicker. When this turns quicker, what you'll see is something like 30 or 40 volts and about 30 or 40 uh, milliamps, something like that. And I've got it rigged up for voltage, and the meter is right there. And Luke's going to call out the voltage, and I'm going to give it a bit of spin, and we'll see what we can get out of it. Ready? Ready! 40 volts, 48 volts, 50 volts. So we got 50 volts out of that really quite easily because it was spinning faster. Let's rig it up for amps. Ah. 30 milliamps, 40 milliamps. 45, 50. There you go, 50 volts at 50 milliamps, piece of cake. And it's a piece of cake because it's spinning faster. So I thought so that was super interesting. And I think the moral of the story here, or at least the thing that I certainly believe, is that the wonderful design of new motors, the uh, fantastic winding of the coils, uh, positions of the magnets and where they're going to be in relation to everything, I don't think is as important as how fast you can get it to turn. I think that, that's quite simply all it's really about, or at least according to me and what's what I think is what it's all about. You can get this thing to run quickly through a magnetic field, you're going to generate a lot. And I can remember power is proportional to the voltage squared. So the faster it gets, the more the power is going to go up. And that's why I'm so interested in that area of it. The actual mechanics of it, the design of the blades, all that sort of stuff, yes, it's interesting, but not so much of an issue in what I'm actually talking about at the moment. With that kind of stuff, I think you come later. I think what we really need to do is focus on getting these things to spin quickly, and that's what matters. Getting a brushless motor or a particular motor design that works perfectly and is the ideal motor, I don't think is really the issue. I think the real issue is getting this thing to turn quickly. And if you can do that, you of course need torque, and so in something like a water wheel, this would work brilliantly if it were geared. And it were geared so we could get some speed out of this. 
those I think are the issues and that was the point of the video 1214 so I thought I would make that a little bit clearer I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching oh please remember to subscribe and like